Good morning, welcome to today's RC Coffee Chat. Right, we've got seven topics on the list, but I am going to need to spin through them quite quickly this morning because today might be a flying day. Well, I know it's a flying day, uh, and I'd like the mini tannin prepared, so I've got to put the FPV camera and sort that bit out this morning. Uh, so we are going to go pretty quick this morning, so very quickly, the topics which we have for this morning's RC Coffee Chat. Uh, those S-Bus converters don't work. Oh, the, I had complete OCD on the uh, tail fin for the Wombat. Uh, what else we got? Oh, the Wombat wings have done as well. Oh, there's an update on some episodes which are coming out in the near future. Uh, oh, Nathan, you were asking about the difference between carbon and glass fiber rods. I just so happen to have three of them here. We'll do a non-scientific test on them. And you can tell one of them's rather long, so we'll do a quick bendy test on those. Uh, so that you can see the difference between them. Uh, oh, and I've ordered an insane motor. Where is it? I did stick it in the Facebooks group this morning. Uh, yeah, a Cobra 282010 uh, 11, uh, 1170kV motor. We'll get to that one in a moment. Uh, and oh yeah, also a shameless plug for the Facebooks group as well. So, uh, number one, uh, those little, well, I don't know if you heard me mention a while ago, I ordered some of these little S-Bus to PWM converters, and uh, no idea at all how they work. It's got S-Bus in on the back, and uh, I was kind of hoping that we could daisy chain them on the uh, Mini Talon or on the Phantom to be able to get a PW signal, PWM signal out of that board. Uh, say uh, for channels like 10 or something like that. Nah, nothing at all. Uh, it just shorts out the receiver, if that makes sense. You get nothing out of it at all. So quite frustrating, it's probably me, but the um, old manual is in 100% uh, Chinglish. No idea how am I supposed to work out what the smeg's going on with that. So all good fun, isn't it? Uh, one bat tail fin. Oh, blimey, the inner. I'll show you. I'll put a photo up on here for you. The inner OCD engineer came out yesterday, and I spent two hours making that. Uh, and this is the finished product. Uh, you'll see on there what I did was that I, could, I wanted the uh, servo to be embedded inside of the tail fin uh, and I know from my experience with these booms models is that the back servo will take a bit of a whack in uh, so I needed some protection for it and the best way which I thought was make a little bed uh, for it and that's that piece there a little bed for it you ooh, don't dip that in the coffee a uh, little bed for it with a bit of core flute so I cut that piece out and then I felt for well, then I felt that it felt too bendy uh, so then I got an ID card and trimmed that out uh, and then some plank uh, cut the wrong side of the core flute for the elevator fin uh, and then had to go and quickly hack up one of the other pieces and oh, it was all good fun. But anyway, it's all done now. That's what I class as excessive. Uh, we've got the servo in there. We do have that. Remember, I, I like to put a physical restraint on uh, servos where possible. Uh, and this tail fin was um, easily doable with a cable tie. And that's wrapped up underneath. Now, I know that's going to have a good uh, plenty of grip on it. Instead of just using the core flute, what we've got is that piece of plastic ID card in the middle. Uh, so I know there's a really nice rigid layer in there. Uh, and then I've got two carbon spars down the front leading edge because that's the one which is likely to get a whack uh, and I put one on the back to stop with, with flexing uh, and I've run them out well, about three four mil out of the edges so that when that goes on the tail boom the fins which go in either side they've got something to lock into them uh, as well so that's going to be my mechanical fixing uh, obviously with goop glue as well uh, that's going to be my mechanical fixing uh, for the side fins uh, and then the actual servo wire actually runs through inside I don't know if you're going to be able to see that inside the core flute as well so yeah spent two hours doing that yesterday uh, quite well I was going to say enjoyable but I knew what I was doing and I knew I was taking it to a city level uh, but I am very pleased with the final results oh I also put the spars in the wing as well uh, give you a quick show you that one uh, on the uh, web camera I do have an extra spar down here at the bottom so when the booms go in it will have like a tooth 
for it to dig into, uh, which I think is pretty cool. I've got so one spar there, one spar across the top. I've got two thinner spars along the leading edges, and I've got another spar underneath. Now, I do have a little tip episode coming out on this one, uh, which is that I used a ruler and some pins to basically make a jig so that I could cut all these uh, super quickly. And once I'd put the measure, done all the measurements, I'd use the pins, just went straight through. And there was, to be honest, the reason why I'm, I, I made that episode is because sometimes my cutting for spars can be a little bit sloppy because the ruler moves and things like that. And using the pins uh, seemed to work fantastically well. And uh, this one is pretty damn stiff, almost wedding tackle grade. So happy days. I will, uh, also, I did notice these little wing tips are maybe a little bit too flexible for my own liking. Uh, so I will run some carbon fiber strip uh, across this section underneath here as well. Uh, completely not needed, uh, but like I said, I'm a bit OCD on sticking carbon fiber in models, so it'll only take a couple of minutes, and uh, once it's in, it's in, and if it saves it from a less than ideal uh, landing or a, a kiss with a tree, that's got to be classed as happy days. Uh, so yeah, the one map wings are getting there. I've only got to dig out two trenches, glue in some servos, and we're almost there. We're almost there for that. Uh, the 48s, uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, the intro episode has been recorded. It needs to go off to get edited. Notice the word off. Uh, that is gonna be done by my, um, in one of the businesses which I run, I do have a full-time video editor. Up until now, it has been me editing all the episodes. Uh, that is gonna be changing in the new year. Uh, and Adrian, good lad, uh, he will be picking up all my longer episodes or all like the mail episodes anything bar the rc coffee chat basically uh, will go to adrian for him to edit and i will be give you a heads up my new year's resolution um is shock horror uh, work harder now i don't think most people are gonna have a new year's resolution like that but uh, somebody made a promise on christmas day so that's what my uh, new year's resolution is uh, work harder in the new year now I, that wasn't even in the list, actually, but I think it's worthwhile covering this. Um, you, If you haven't seen the introduction episode to this channel, let me just go and find it a second, and I'll stick it on the screen uh, so you can see it. I'll pop that up there uh, and go for new visitors. There we go. There is an episode there. If you haven't seen this episode yet, do go and watch that. Um, I'm why differently to most as you may have already been and worked out and uh, yeah my new year's, new year's resolution is actually to work harder than what i did last year and i can wholeheartedly put my hand on my heart and say that i was a bit of a lazy bastard last year uh, on certain things uh, and that is going to change this year uh, i do have a goal in my head uh, is that we need to get to five episodes per day for youtube whether we get anywhere near that i'm not entirely sure uh, and by the way, I actually feel that's wholly achievable because if you think about it logically, uh, we have an RC coffee chat, we have a mail opening episode, we have a, uh, what should we call it, some form of feature content in the evening. Uh, and of course, if you then chuck in a build episode or something else that we're at four, and then the fifth one isn't that far off where we chuck in a tip or something like that. So yeah, really looking to up what I'm doing at the moment. And of course, I've got other things going on here in the background. I've just been promoted one of my staff. Uh, so he's not based in the UK, uh, but he's gonna be pretty much in this office um, as my project manager uh, for a couple of software products. So yeah, it, it's gonna be a busy ass new year for me, uh, for that's for sure. Uh, and you'll see part of that coming out on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, crazy times, right. Uh, yeah, uh, 48 uh, intro uh, has been done. That's what I was saying a few moments ago. Uh, parts two, three, four of the Wombat build have also been recorded. Now I am going for like a little mini episode like so that you can follow along the journey with the uh, Wombat and of course any of the other models which we've got. And I know you do get an insight with these RC coffee chats, but uh, is that I would like a dedicated series on them. So we are now at a stage, I've got a few other bits to do, quickly do on that one, and then we'll quickly recap 
where we are uh, with the Wombat so that then releases me to move on to the next stage and of course rather than me showing you oh you cut a line in here for the spa to go in I'll show you the jig and what I used instead because you can do the glue and that that's all straightforward it's what you're after what I feel the that, well, what I would want to know if I was in your shoes uh, is my approach to different uh, scenarios uh, and that's exactly what I'm sharing uh, in the Wombat series and I'll be doing exactly the same in the 48, the FG36 and whatever the other wing was, the Twin Zoo uh, build as well. It's the mythology behind the actual build which is more important than actually sitting there and watching the build. Uh, in, in my humble opinion, of course if you think I'm wrong do let me know uh, in the old comments section underneath this episode. So with that said, next topic was... I am talking very quickly because I've got a busy day's worth of flying in front of me. And Nathan was asking about carbon fiber and glass fiber. So uh, Nathan, this is a very, very long piece of glass fiber rod, solid. Uh, and it's about I don't know, two foot, actually three foot long. Uh, absolutely epic, but you'll notice it's quite bendy. Uh, so I've got two pieces of carbon fiber here. So this is the nearest piece which I've got, uh, which is almost the same size and actually to be fair it is slightly bigger than this piece of glass fiber which I've got here. Now if I'm, I want to make a point that I've got, I've got it about the same amount and I'm holding it with my hand and gripping it as hard as possible and then I'm using a little bit of force which I hope you can see on here and the glass fiber is definitely very very bendy okay whereas I'm really, with the carbon fiber I'm really having to put some pressure on that to get that bend and you'll see how quickly it comes back whereas I do it with the glass fiber uh, it's it springs and bounces everywhere now I did also have another piece here and this piece is slightly thinner I'd say about a millimeter smaller again same hand grip and about this is by the way this is about the most scientific of, I can make it for you again glass fiber super bendy not really requiring a lot amount of uh, um, pressure to do it and yeah this one I'll try and do yeah the Carbon fiber, the thinner piece, yeah, is still stiffer than the uh, glass fiber rod. So, or actually, I could phrase this a completely different way. Uh, Team Legit sent me a load of glass fiber uh, rods to go in the models, uh, and I've stuck carbon fiber in mine. Uh, and the reason for that, by the way, there's nothing wrong with these glass fiber rods. Uh, it's just that I had these carbon fiber rods here a while ago. I, I'm sure you can remember a couple of weeks back that I bought a load of carbon fiber from, what was it, easycomposites.co.uk. Fantastic little website. Um, this stuff is kind of cheap when you start buying lots of it. Um, especially, well, you can buy the this carbon fiber uh, up to 50 centimeter lengths. Uh, from Banggood for not a lot of money and in fact in the video description I'll put links to all the different sizes which you can buy. The longer lengths, I, like I said, I buy from a UK company called Easy Composites and you can buy them uh, in one or two meter lengths. Uh, the one meter lengths for most of the stuff is about two pounds odd-ish, so a couple of dollars and of course if you're in the United States you'll need to look locally for that. Uh, and I do get for a lot of it. Uh, for the 48 build, I do have some longer pieces, uh, but I don't have enough to do the whole model, so we will end up with some uh, glass bars in there, that's for sure, and I'm just looking over there because she's sat on there on the workbench. Um, oh, the other benefit to using black carbon fiber, and the only I mean, because it is black, uh, is because when it's embedded in the wing, if you do smash this wing, it's super, oh, because you've got a black material with um, a white foam, you can see the pieces a lot, lot easier. And you can take that from my own personal experience, uh, is that I've smashed carbon rods inside of wings before, and it's been very, very easy uh, to clean up. And uh, again, generally, because you've got a great big rep in the wing, uh, and you can see where it's broken. You, know, you can see the material which you can take out, or need to take out, should I say. The next topic is the last but one topic for this morning. Uh, the Cobra, big again, big hat tip to Tori. Tori, I do appreciate your input. Um, let me go here. I've been and bought one of these motors. It's a Cobra 28 2010 turn uh, 1170 kV. And again, 
Shane, to be honest, you mentioned it as well, uh, and it was only when I was chatting to Tori and he came up with exactly the same motor. Now, this motor has got some obscene amounts of thrust. I'll put a linky to this prop data uh, in the video description for you. Uh, but down in 4 by S, um, down on 4S, uh, you'll see that I've already been an identified 9x6E uh, as being a, uh, a good option uh, for the uh, propeller for it. The reason being is that I reckon with the model is going to come out around about two kilograms, possibly a little bit more than that. And I do like to try and keep a one to one thrust ratio. So weight to, to thrust ratio. Uh, and that would get me very, very close. I can slightly over prop it. Uh, up to and we get an extra 300 grams worth of thrust I may end up doing that so that's anyway that's the motor which I'm going for uh, it will be here sometime in the future in the, in the meantime I will run that SK3 motor on there uh, and see if it can cope uh, and by the way the 48 is not going to be an arm slinger like I do with all my other flying wings it really will be grab it by the leading edge and up over the head uh, to get it launched. Now the last topic for today is uh, very much a shameless plug for the Facebooks group. Uh, if you are on Facebook, and I do uh, I do understand that some of you don't like Facebooks, uh, there is a Facebook group for Rag the Nuts Off, uh, and it's like the after party for the RC Coffee Chat. I'm actually going to wander down uh, in here, uh, see what's going on there. Now, look, there's Johnny from Team Legit. Uh, saying that's a perfect motor for the 48. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, there's me sharing my um, OCD yesterday uh, with the Wombat. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then we were having a discussion about our mini engineers coming out. And uh, <laughs> yeah, funny. Uh, well, I found it funny. I found it interesting. Uh, Sean Speed, who's based over in Australia, uh, is experienced currently 56 degrees. I'm here with my hat on because I'm freezing my boobies off. What else we got on here? Jamie's had a nice big stash of goodies to turn up from Stone Blue Airplanes. Uh, which again, just questions like uh, Simon asking about what's the CFG of the Bix 3. Instead of having to trawl around the intervals trying to find stuff, chuck it in the group. And this is one of the cool things about the group. And I, I use it extensively. If I get stuck with something, or I, um, I need to ask a question rather than like trying to dig through the intervals trying to find something I chuck it in the Facebook group and the reason why I do that is because I know there's some very experienced pilots in there and I have no shame in asking daft questions at all so it doesn't matter if you are a newbie pilot or seasoned pilot pop on in I'll put a link to the Facebook group in the video description for you just click on the join button on the right hand side uh, and then we just generally have a chit chat uh, throughout the day over on Facebooks. So with that said, to recap the topics for today. Yeah, really frustrating. Those little converters are definitely not working. I got three of them as well, which is rather frustrating. Uh, I'm sure it's user error, uh, but the Chinglish manual really doesn't help at all. Uh, one bat tail fin. <laughs> OCD. <laughs> Uh, the one about wings have been done. Uh, we do have at least five episodes coming out. Four of those are for the Wombat. Uh, fifth one for the 48 introduction. That will be out and edited some point in the future. And we also had that little note around uh, my personal goal for the new year, uh, which is basically work more. Um, yeah, it's going to be exciting year 2017 for me personally. And goodness knows what you're going to see of it here on u Bulls, that's for sure. Uh, Nathan was asking about glass fibre and carbon fibre. Nathan, my point blank answer is use carbon fibre if you have it available to you. Uh, I do much prefer to use that in my models. But if you do only have glass fibre, there's no shame in that. It's just a little bit bendier. Okay, and I'm going to have to use that in the 48, uh, I'm sure, just because of the sheer amount of uh, spars which that model will need. Then we had the Cobra motor, which looks absolutely bonkers. And I'll put a linky to that in the video description for the spec sheet. Uh, and last or, last but least, we had the shameless pug plug uh, for the Facebooks group. Facebooks group, and I'll put a link to that in the video description for you. And remember, just hit the join button in the right hand corner, and I'll pick that up at some point later today. Do note, I am going to be out flying today, and I will be. Uh, I need to go and get the uh, mini talons on sorted. I need to put the FPV camera on, uh, run a, an extension wire for the FPV camera, and then tap that up in the side. Anyway, all minor stuff, uh, and we should be taking her out for a maiden today. 
happy days. Hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes well. You'll find out probably in the Facebook group later today. And on that note, I'd like to wish you a very, very happy new year. Now, people do take the t- uh, opportunity at New Year's to set goals um, for themselves in the new year. I can only personally lead by example. My my goal for the entire 2017 is something so simple I just can't go wrong with. So if you're thinking up some imagine uh, some fantastic things which you're going to do uh, in 2017, uh, and if it get if it, if it starts becoming too complicated. Uh, I would personally suggest dumb it down. Dumb it down to something like work harder, okay? Yours could be work less. And that could be a serious uh, New Year's resolution because maybe you're getting near retirement age, for example. Um, then screw it. Maybe this maybe this year's time for you to, to chill out a little bit more. Maybe just enjoy the family and things like that. It all depends upon your personal circumstances. Now, for me... Work harder can mean many different things. It could mean more YouTube episodes. It could be work on some of the software products which I've been working on. It could be because I'm working harder, it means that I build up my team. That could mean hiring more staff, for example. Uh, It could mean many, many different things. And that's why I like something so simple as work harder. Because if, if I work harder and whatever I'm doing, good stuff, just kind of happens and hopefully you're going to see the uh, byproducts of that uh, over here on Ubels. Um I don't know that I, I'm anyway look I'm rambling uh, about New Year's resolutions my tip for you keep it simple okay you can never go wrong with simple mine is as simple as I can make it which is work harder so on that note I would like to wish you an absolutely fantastic uh, 2017 uh, if you're out drinking tonight have fun uh, and on that note, I'm going now. Time for me to uh, drink a cuppa, sort out that mini talon, and we'll be taking her out for a damn good ragging today, that's for sure. So on that note, from myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for joining me today for today's RC Coffee Chat, and I shall see you probably with a hangover, your hangover, not mine, sorry, I don't drink, uh, tomorrow morning, bright and early, and I'll make especially sure that I'm bright and chirpy. So on that note, for myself, Matt, Cheerios!